Hello, I'm Sarah and I'm here today to show you how to create a uh, background for your game in Unity. Now this will be one video of several and this one will show you how to create a background for your game if you already have a single image created for your background. And this is not the way that I would recommend creating your backgrounds in Unity. Instead, what I'd recommend is having one image for the very back layer of your game, so the ground or the uh, area in the, in the background of a side scroller, so just the sort of scenery, and then a separate, so either separate objects or tiles to create the parts of the game that you actually can bump into and interact with, the collision. But if you have already created a background for your game um, and you just want to try it out and you want to use the background that you already have, then this is a tutorial that will show you how to do that. So this is if you have a single image for your background. To start us off, if you're using Unity Playground, and that is a plugin that you can use that will uh, kind of help you create games in Unity without any code, and it's really designed for beginners. So if you're using Unity Playground, what I will recommend is for this tutorial, you'll need to turn it off. And that's because Unity Playground seems to uh, shut down the ability to edit your uh, colliders in detail. So we'll need to turn it off for this tutorial. If you are using it, you'll need to make sure you turn it back on at the end. So that we'll, we'll do to start off with. We will uh, go up to the playground menu up at the top and we'll choose turn playground off. And that will uh, make it so that the Unity playground isn't controlling how our colliders look. And that's going to be really important so that we can actually edit them. So that's step sort of zero to start us off. Now, step one, to get started here, we need a scene in which to work. So in Unity, everything is arranged in scenes and they control what is shown at that time on the screen. So we want a scene for our level or if you have only one level for your game itself. So let's go ahead and create a new scene now. If we go up to File and choose New Scene. Now, if you already have a scene that you've been working with, you can use that. But if you don't, we'll make a new scene now. So File, New Scene. And it's created a new scene. Now we want to save this scene somewhere. So let's go ahead and do uh, Control S or File, Save Scene uh, or Save. And this will save our current scene that we have open. If you don't already have a scenes folder, I don't have one, you should make one because we want to make sure our Unity project stays nice and tidy and clean. So let's create a new folder and call it Scenes, if you can spell properly. And then double click on that and we're going to store our scene in there. Now we should name our scene something. So I'm going to name mine level one, but if you don't have multiple levels, you can just call it something like in game, but I'm going to call mine level one and I'm going to click save. So you'll know that's worked because in your hierarchy in the top right on my screen, yours may be in a different place, but it'll say hierarchy at the top. In your hierarchy, you will now see your scene and any game objects in your scene will be inside of it there. So by default, it just has a camera for a 2D scene. Okay, so for the next step, we need to actually put our background image into the scene. Now remember for this tutorial, we're assuming you only have one background image. If you want a tutorial that will explain how to deal with multiple background images or how to deal with tiles, that'll be a separate video. So for this example, I've got a, uh, little graphic made already that I just um, copied from Kenny Asset, which is a free asset uh, website. And we're just going to assume this is what I kind of planned to have. And I'm going to go ahead and change my aspect ratio over here to be 16 by 9. So this looks a little bit more normal. And you can look, if you see on my screen, I have this game view over here. Yours might be in a different place. So I can actually change the size of my uh, scene or sorry of my background image using my scene view my game view will show how it looks to the player so if i want it to look a certain way to the player then i want to take a look at that game view to make sure that what i'm doing will match what will actually uh, be visible to the player at the end okay so now that's kind of set up how i might want it uh, and i'm going to go ahead and say step two completed so step three, so now I have this background, but this background has no collision associated with it, none at all. So I'm going to create some 
blank or empty game objects, some invisible game objects. And these are going to represent the different parts of the background that will have collision on them. So I'm going to go ahead and go up to game object and I'm going to choose create empty. And I've got this empty game object over here. Notice that also my background happens to be called background, but if you didn't name your background, you should do that now. Change the name of your background to be background. And I'm going to change this little game object. I'm going to call it background collision one, because we might need a few of these. And this is why this isn't the best way to do your background. Uh, collision. You really should have these uh, these uh, parts of the ground either as tiles or as separate objects to make this a little bit easier. But that's all right. If you already got it this way, we can deal with it. So background collision one. Now, if I choose in the top of the screen, the arrow, uh, these this move tool, which is with these uh, equal uh, cross uh, with arrows in the end, if I use that, now I can move this uh, object around and I can move it by grabbing the sort of square part of that uh, gizmo there. And if I want to, I can just move it in the X and Y directions by using those arrows, but I want to move it freeform. So I'm going to use the square part of the gizmo. And I'm going to place it roughly where I want. So I'm going to use this for this sort of up and down portion of this rock. That'll be nice and easy. So I'm going to place it there. And now I'm going to add a component to it. So this is the next step. Once you've got it kind of positioned uh, where you want it, you need to add a component to it. And we're going to add a collider. All right. And what we want is a collider 2D. And remember, that's very important because the 2D and 3D physics systems do not talk to each other. They don't play nice. They don't share. So if you're going to have 2D physics in your game, you only want 2D colliders. Now you can choose whatever type of Collider 2D looks best for your background. Mine is very square, so I'm going to use a Box Collider 2D because it's nice and square. And you can now see in my scene that I have a green outline uh, of this little square, and that's my Box Collider. So this is the reason we turned off Unity Playground, if you did have Unity Playground turned on, is that now I get this Edit Collider button. So there's two ways I can edit this collider. I can use that button, which is what we're going to do, or you can use the offset and size manually to alter the position uh, and size of the collider, but that's a real pain and I wouldn't recommend doing it. So instead we'll use the Edit Collider. And now that I've clicked that, I've got these little uh, filled in squares on each uh, edge of my collider and I can drag them out to where I want them to be. So I kind of want to set them up so that they're in the right place. Like so. And then I have that part of the collider done. So all you have to do now is repeat that until you have enough uh, colliders for all of your background. So I'm going to pause the video here and when I come back I will have done the collisions for all of these backgrounds. So I will see you in just a moment. Uh, you go ahead and pause the video now and do that yourself. Okay, hopefully you have now set up your uh, colliders for each portion of your background that needs to have collision. On my project, that's only three different areas, so I will click on them over here and you can see there's the first one that we did together, there's the second one, which is this bottom area here, and here's the third one, which is on the right-hand side. Notice that this first and second one are the same uh, object, sort of, the same in the background, it looks like the same object, but I've used two separate game objects to actually represent the collision because it's a complex shape, it doesn't really work without that. Um, you can use more complicated colliders, such as polygon colliders, but they're a little bit more difficult to edit, and it's easy just to use two different box colliders. Now, we'll notice a problem. If I later go to move my background, and then I look at my collision, they're still where the background used to be. So I'm going to control Z to go back to where it was. Now, we don't want that. We want to be able to move the background and not lose our colliders. So to do that, we can select our colliders, and I'm going to Hold down shift while clicking. I, I click on the first one. I'm not holding down anything right now. I'll click on the first one. Now I'm going to hover over the last collider and I'm going to hold down shift now and click on it. And that will select all of the colliders in between the first one and the last one. And with those selected, I'm going to click on one and drag. And I'm going to drag it into the background. And now these are children. They've, I've made them children 
of the background. And what that means is when I move the background, these children move as well. And you can see that they are still where they're meant to be. So I'm going to control Z because I don't really want my background way down there. But having them be children will make it a lot easier for you in the long run if you later decide to move your background around. Okay, we are now at the point where we can test, but we need a player to test with. So I created a player um, in a previous tutorial, and uh, hopefully you already have at this point a player that can move around, uh, because that's really the first step that you should be doing. So I'm going to go ahead and use my player that I already have. If you don't have one, now's a really good time to go and create a player that can move around to a basic ability. We're not going to cover that in this tutorial, but uh, my previous tutorials will cover it. So to do that, I've already got a player. I've got a prefab made for them, which means I've set them all up as a game object. And then I dragged that game object into my project window and basically saved all the settings. So now I can just replunk it out wherever I want and I want to put it out in this scene. So I'm going to drag my player out here. It's just this little guy. Now, you may notice a problem immediately. When I tried to put him onto the scene, he's in the background, he's behind it, and that's not what we want. We want him to be visible in front of our background. So the reason that's happened is because every image in Unity has a sorting layer and a order within that layer. Now, if you're using Unity Playground, there's already some sorting layers defined, and we can just use those. If you're not using Unity Playground, you can set your own sorting layers. We're not ready to cover that in this tutorial. Or you can just use the order in layer. Okay, so for now, we're going to use um, the sorting layer, and I'll show you how to do that. So if you click on your background, and you look over in the sprite render, and you scroll down to sorting layer, I'm going to choose background now. And now you see it's already, the player's already gone behind it, but just to make things really clear and careful. We're also going to set the sorting layer for our player. So if you click on the player, you look at their sprite renderer, you look at their sorting layer, and you'll see that it's set to default. We're going to change that to gameplay. So now the player is always going to be in front. So anything that is lower on that list will be in front. It's drawn later and therefore on top. It's a little bit confusing because you think the things that are on top would be at the top of the list. But instead, you should think of the list as the layers a painter is painting on his canvas. So the first thing the painter paints will be closest to the canvas and farther away from the viewer. Then the next thing he paints, the next thing on the list, will be painted on top of whatever previous stuff he painted and will be closer to the viewer and therefore seen on top of it. So things that are lower down the list are actually drawn closer to us and we can see them on top of the other items in the list. It's a little bit confusing, but you'll get used to it over time. All right, so our player is now drawing on top of that background. So my player that I have set up here has a, a movement script that lets him move from left to right and a jumping script, and this is using the Unity Playground. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and press play and I'm going to see that he can jump, but he's not running into anything. And that is because I don't have a collider on the player himself. So if you don't already have a collider set up on your player, now is the time to do that. So to do that, I'm going to click on my player, have them selected there, and go all the way down to the bottom and click on add component. I'm going to give them a collider. Now the collider you choose depends on your player. If they're quite a large and complicated geometry, say maybe a spaceship or something, you may wish to choose a polygon collider 2D. I'm going to choose a capsule collider. And for most platformer or top-down style games, I would recommend a capsule collider. And the reason is that if you use a box collider, they tend to get stuck on things. Um, and a circle collider is too circular. So a capsule collider is usually close enough to the um, geometry of the player and it works pretty well. So I'm going to use a capsule collider and make sure you use a capsule collider 2D because the 2D and 3D physics systems do not interact. So we need to make sure we're always using 2D. Okay, so capsule collider 2D. I've added that now to my player. You can see that it's um, on them. I'm gonna zoom in here and take a look at them. It's a little bit, uh, maybe not quite how we want. So I'm gonna click on edit and I'm gonna bring in these uh, these sides a little bit so that they are more um, close to his body. So when you're editing your collider, you don't have to make 
uh, it matched them exactly. In fact, it tends to be better if it's a little bit further in um, than, you know, and there's, bit, there's bits of the sprite hanging out a little bit. And the reason for that is if your player, so you're using this collider to determine if your player gets hit by a bullet or something, it's much better to have them maybe should have gotten hit but don't than to have them get hit when the player expected them not to. So that's something that's really important to remember as a designer when you're setting up your colliders, be a little bit conservative with them, make them a little bit closer in to the player um, than, uh, rather than you know more wide. And that will feel fairer to your players. So that's why I've set up my collider as I have there. And I think that's probably all right. So now if I press play, what should happen is that my player should sit and they have sat on the um, ground. So the only issue that I'm going to have here is that if I move to the right, um, my player uh, falls over and now he's kind of <laughs> rolling around and, and rotating. This is not what we want, right? It's obviously not the desirable behavior. And the reason that's happening is because I've let the physics system control my player's rotation. And we don't want that. In this kind of a 2D platformer game, I don't want that. Um, most likely, most of your 2D games, you probably don't want that rotation unless you're making a very physics-based game. So I'm going to change that. And to do that, I need to select my player, which they are selected right now. I need to go over to the rigid body 2D and I need to go down um, to the uh, constraints. And if I click on constraints, I'll get the options freeze position, X and Y and freeze rotation. So I'm going to choose uh, to freeze rotation by clicking on the Z box there, freeze rotation. And now my player will not, I, I can choose to rotate the player if I want to, but the physics system will no longer rotate the player on its own. So what this means that I can now move about without having to worry about that. Now, if you're making a spaceship game, you probably don't want to do that um, <laughs> because your game will, uh, you need the rotation with the physics system to work properly. Okay. So there's still one more problem with my game, and this will only be a problem if you are using Unity Playground and you are making a platformer game. But if that is the case, what you'll notice is your player can only jump once and they can never jump again. And the reason for that is, at least on my player, uh, the setup says that he should check when jumping, he should check that the ground has that is being touched, basically. He will only be able to jump if he's touching the ground. And that means the ground tag initially uh, be checked. So what is the ground tag? What does that mean? Uh, ground tag, ground, right? What that means is that to determine if the player is touching the ground, it will check everything it's touching. And if the thing it is touching has the tag ground, it will assume that it is in fact touching the ground and it will allow you to jump, but only if you are touching that. So, uh, What's a tag? Why, why do we need that? The reason we use tags is because we don't always want to name our objects the same thing, but we want to show that they have similar behavior in some way. So tags is how we can do that. So if we click on our background collision, this is the collider that the player will be touching. The player will never be touching the background image, right? They'll only be touching the collision, right? So if we click on the collision objects there, um, and I'm going to select multiple of them at once using shift or control just to make it easier for me, but you can do this one at a time if you choose. These objects all have a tag, but the tag right now is untagged, meaning that they don't really have a tag yet. If you look in the inspector, you'll see there's a field called tag and there's a drop down next to it. And you can see these objects have untagged as their tag. So we can change that for these objects to be ground. So now when the player is touching one of these objects, they'll check what's the tag on that object. They'll see that it is a ground tag and the player can then jump normally. So if I press play here, we should see that in action. The player can jump once, which they always could, and they can jump as many times as they want to, but not unless they're touching the ground. So that's what we really want to see. Good. Okay, so that is the basics of how to set up a background um, if you have a single image. I will have several other tutorials covering how to set up a background if you have 
multiple images, if you have a tile map, and even if you have a scrolling background that's going to be scrolling down the screen, for example, in an infinite runner. All right, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and look out for my future ones.